Cool thing about this card is that it does support bootcamp after installing the software update. You get a quick start guide and a spare PCIe frame. The card itself is pretty small and well sealed. If you turn it to the side, you can get a sneak peek of the SSDs underneath the frame. The card also features two eSATA ports for external hard drives. To install, first lift the case lock, pull the door, unscrew the PCIe screw bracket. Remove a PCIe frame. Note that the furthest two slots are slower than the bottom two. But in testing, I didn't notice any difference for this SSD drive. It may be different for an NVMe. Next, simply slot in the PCIe card. Now, something I want to point out is that it does take up a PCIe slot and PCIe slots in your Mac are precious. It's the only thing allowing you to install a graphics card, a USB free card, a 10 gig network card. So just remember that these PCIe SSD cards will be taking up one of these spaces. All right, rescrew in the bracket. These brackets can be fiddly, but with enough struggle, it does work. Turn your machine on and watch the lights flicker. On boot, you'll be greeted with an error message. This is a good thing. It means the Mac recognizes the drive. If you launch disk utility, you can verify this. The disk speed tests show that it writes at around 580 megabytes per second and reads at 650, which is six to seven times faster than my spindle hard drive, but still a lot slower than drives in modern Macs today. So there's a big question mark there on value for money. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get the SSD drive running as your boot drive. This will make your machine a lot faster as your boot drive contains all the system files your Mac needs to operate, not just boot. I used an app called SuperDuper for this. Simply select your current boot drive in the copy section, select the new SSD drive in the to section. By default, it will erase the SSD, copy over the files and make the SSD bootable. Now, depending on how much stuff you have on there will determine how long you have to wait. For me, transferring over around 800 gigabytes took over seven hours. But once it's done, go into System Preferences, Start of Disk, and select the SSD drive as the boot drive. That's it. You can now repurpose your hard drive for something else. If you want to install Windows via Bootcamp, make sure you also install the Dual Boot Enabler. While doing so, you'll be prompted to allow the software to be installed by Mac Security Policy, so watch out for that too. Overall, this drive does exactly what it says on the tin. However, for the performance, it is a bit overpriced and it is using up one of those valuable PCIe slots. All right, guys, hope you found that useful. If there's anything I missed, please leave a comment below and make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'll be posting more videos on my upgrade process. For example, the memory, CPU, all that kind of stuff. Now, let's get to editing this damn video. broke.